at AIA Australia, helping your clients in their time of need is our number one priority. In 2016, we paid over $1.15 billion in claims to both retail and group members. That's over $4.5 million every working day. To offer your clients cover you can trust, chat to your AIA CDM today. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead with this. Bitcoin. It needs to be said. It's it's the year. It's the year of Bitcoin. It's the year of cryptos. Man, oh, I am no. so over hearing about Bitcoin. Talking with about you, ben. Bitcoin. <laughs> Still my head in. <laughs> oh man. My Facebook streams just spam. <clears throat> Bitcoin spam. It's it's terrifying. It's definitely, definitely terrifying. But so there's a half a trillion <laughs> dollars in cryptocurrency at this point. I heard uh, I heard this story on the radio the other day, and they were talking on Triple J about um, people living in their siblings' uh, shadows. And one guy was twenty five, and he was talking about how his sixteen year old brother made a million dollars buying Bitcoin, oh. and then just oh. sold it and bought a house. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nonsense. I'm I'm also in this uh, this Facebook group called Men's Financial Advice, and it's basically just about like buying Bitcoin and how to get a personal loan to put a bigger exhaust on your car. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing. Like, well, that's yeah. what Bitcoin's for, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Buy Bitcoin, bigger exhaust. This is what financial yeah. advice is for, surely. Yeah, <laughs> surely. The, the tulips of 2017. We yeah. actually have had a lot of activity on the group as well on mm. Bitcoin. Mm. Yeah. Know, you've seen. Um, well, it's for, everyone's getting asked by their clients. Well, yeah. And whether or not uh, you can buy Bitcoin in the SMSFs. So I think uh, Liam mm. Short spoke to the ATO and it's kind of read your deeds. They're not in a position to tell people what their asset allocation is, so go for it. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's definitely the thing. It's it's absolutely no longer uh, an esoteric asset class. If there's a half a trillion dollars in it, mm. then at some point an advisor has to go, I- I'm willing to have the conversation. Well, the horse racing industry is also pretty big too. It's probably bigger than that. <laughs> 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 Just saying. I'm pretty sure you can own a horse in an SMSF, guy. That was a mare of a joke, mate. <laughs> At least the horse Arms is an actual real thing. What concerns me, though, yeah. is I'm mo- I'm like in my, in my social group, a lot of my friends have started coming to me now asking cryptocurrency. Mm. They weren't interested in you know anything else to do with money. They weren't interested in tax or savings yep. or a- anything about best practice on what to do with your personal money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cryptocurrencies. It's a shitload of FOMO going yeah. on. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Well, yeah. think about it this way. Uh, as a retail investor, especially if you don't know a lot, and especially if you're young, $500 is the minimum that you can invest in, say, on Comsec, for example. Mm. Um, and then wh- what are you hoping out of that? You know, 7% return over a year? Boring. Right? <laughs> you, now, now, now I, I've stuck $500 in, in, in random cryptos, right? Forgotten about them for, for months and come back and they're worth 2500 you And you're just thinking, oh, well, this is why, right? This I'm is, good. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is exactly why people love Love cryptos. I've got zero uh, qualms in saying it, it, from the moment it was worth one cent, it was in a bubble. There's absolutely no value here. There's nothing mm. intrinsic. There's no asset. There's no income. It might replace the economy of third world countries. That's probably the only value you could possibly give to or it. Or if you want to buy narcotics online. Mm. Uh, right. Or a hitman. <laughs> yeah, hitman. No, right. Yes, yeah. Silk Forgetting Road. about hitman. Yeah. 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 The dark web is a strange place, people. <laughs> Tor, the Tor network, right? Yeah. 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 But it's... Um, yeah, I, th- I think it's one of those things that we're seeing so many so many people like our clients and, and the, the public in general that are just... Uh, you know, seeing the stories and seeing it go up and up, and now they're wanting to get in at you know probably the worst time when it's yeah. just just continuing to increase. So, and why do you reckon though? Is it literally it's different this time? It's tulip mania. It's just that people want to invest Definitely. sexy. It's like that. That's and you know, in my place. view, investing should be boring. If it's boring, yep. that's a good result. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, pe- people want something that's that's interesting. They don't, and especially what young people don't realize. And I have this conversation day in and day out with my clients that when once you figure out how the, like the the outcomes that you want to get in the future, the question that you should be asking yourself is how do you get there with the least amount of risk mm, or give yourself the highest totally. chance of actually getting there yep. rather than getting there in the quickest amount of time possible mm. or the sexiest way possible. Um, 
because that 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 well, way you're, you're your increasing your risk of objective. losing everything. Yeah. So uh, so yeah. I well, I had the I had the fun. conversation with a client the other day that called up, and that was my first client that called up inquiring, and it was it was interesting. I said. There's no way this would ever make it into my model portfolio of investments. <laughs> um, you can do what you want. <laughs> this is not advice at all. Unless you're an anarchist. The anarchist models. Yeah, yeah. Well, and the clients that really like drugs as well. So, um... <laughs> yeah. But, uh, okay, so, so, so we can all agree there's fundamentally nothing about cryptocurrencies that are appealing. Yet, it's gone. So I bought, you know, a, a, a couple of grand's worth back in August. But it's now worth fifteen thousand, right? So, so there's there's wrong sell. Yeah, sell well, I, I I definitely am. <laughs> but you can be right and you can be wrong, and however, people are still making a shit ton of money. Mm. So, what do you so? There's a reason why you'd never put it in the portfolio because, like, do you have gold in your portfolio, for example? Ooh, good, good. Good point, Clay. Well, because that's got no assets, it's got no income. It's mm. a, it's a metal that's dug up from the well, ground. It's a tangible asset, though. It's a it's a lump of gold. Yeah, but what do you do with gold when everything goes to custom? Mate? But that's like what saying a website bed. isn't mm. um, tangible, right? Like computer code, sure, you might not be able to touch it, but mm. yeah, you definitely can't touch it. Isn't that the definition of tangible? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, but it still exists, right? So you can see, you can see, a, yeah, you can see a website, yeah. right? Absolutely. But so, would you invest in Amazon, for example, right? You know, that was a massive website. But they deliver tangible. Oh, assets. now they yeah, do. Yeah, and they own things. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Anyway. You want to play Look, I I'd definitely invest in financial advice, and that's not tangible. But uh, right, I think cryptocurrency waste of time. Yeah, Can we yeah. never talk about it again. Yeah, <laughs> you've had enough. Definitely not in the you group. Tell me. It, it just needed to be covered at least once. It would be yeah. um, remiss of us. I've always kind of wondered whether or not it was a little bit of timing. That's kind of why it's done so well. Uh, it hasn't been the most stable year politically. Mm. Um, the The rise of the Chinese middle class is an absolute game changer for younger generations, and because they've got caps on how much money they mm. can take out of the Chinese economy. Capital controls are a big part of well, this. Well, this, yeah. this, this mm. is a conduit which looks very, mm. very interesting if you're middle class and you're, you're you know, trying to get your money into... Well, I read something Venezuela's developing their own cryptocurrency to of course they circumvent. Will. I'm speculating. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually know that they're the ones using this stuff, but it, it, it makes sense to me that, you know, this, this serves as an appropriate conduit. So I just wonder if we're all piggybacking on, or, you know, the people that are investing in it are piggybacking in that. But once that, that starts to get regulated or the, the government starts looking at this stuff, then you lose your capital value and uh, suddenly the world goes back to making sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just the supply and demand thing. Like if the yeah, demand's... Yeah. Like if we're saturated now, if you're thinking about who's asking about it, people well, that would... everyone's asking, but who's actually doing? That's uh, the other yeah. thing. Yeah. So right? There's still plenty to well, run. Well, I know that the Intrello guys, they've just... Uh, just put a, a new um, sort of clause into their trust deed so that all of their SMSF clients can can use cryptos if, if they want to, if they want to switch their yeah. deed. Yeah. Chris Chris Kiddo on the on the Facebook group also. Yeah. Was, yeah, that's was, was, that, was that the one? That's yeah, Intello, yeah, yeah. yeah. Intello. Intello. Mm. Intello. Anyway. It'd be really good, good for guys. purchasing art for your SMSF on the black market. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. So moving swiftly along. Uh, so 2017, big year. Big year. Biggest year. Uh, big year for, for, I think, the advice community. Lots of changes. Mm. Big year for the XY advisor community. Yeah. Plenty of action. I yeah. think, Ray J, what's, what was our, our rundown for this year? Well, rather rather nicely, we got out of Sydney. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this year. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I'll talk about Mastermind in a moment, but I think one of the things that we certainly recognize, I think just by virtue of the fact that we are in Sydney, um, you know, and, and our networks are in Sydney that, that we tend to be a bit Sydney heavy. And I think 17, 2017 was a year that we certainly wanted to be mindful of that. And certainly next year, um, you know, I, I don't know that we want to see Sydney as the home for XY Advisor anymore. I think totally. we want to see truly, truly yeah. national. Brisbane. Well, the Brisbane event was my funnest event oh. I've been to. <laughs> and, and the best, by far the best named event um, that we've had, XY Does Brisbane Vegas. <laughs> 
clearly we, we oh, broke the, the marketing budget. I'll take that, on that one. one. Uh, <laughs> this yeah. is what happens when Paddy tries to get creative. <laughs> hey, I was just talking my market up there, that's all. <laughs> that was a good event, though. It was a, it was a great crowd up in Oh, up in awesome Bri- crowd. I can't wait to do more events in Brisbane. And it was a yeah. cool space, wasn't it, as well? Mm, no, no, no. No, okay. that, no, it wasn't a cool space. It was, I wasn't happy with the auditory. The, um, there was right. no air conditioning. Uh, okay. Melbourne. Oh, so it was funky. It was just warm. <laughs> yeah. Melbourne was a much better space. Yeah. But people know it's warm, I guess. Well, they're used, they're used to it. <laughs> your they're opinion. Used, they're used to it down there. Yeah. <laughs> But Brisbane, geez, everyone stayed out. They polished off all the booze, and yeah. then we went searching for more booze. So very X Y event. And then you you, you can't forget that uh, Facebook live from uh, from Adrian at the bar. This is why Adrian's now been banned from oh. uh, doing Facebook live in the group. Mm. Hey, now, just being authentic, guys. <laughs> just wa- too authentic. <laughs> waking, There's a line. There's wake, a line. Waking up to see Adrian just going X Y. <laughs> I, 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 no, that was a different one. I very rarely <laughs> get that angry, but I think I'm pretty sure I tried to boot you from the, <laughs> the page, the it's group. I was like, muted. you just Delete you're gone. Em, did you get another application from, from Adrian the Monday after the event? Can you let me back in, please? <laughs> Aspiring advisor. <laughs> Aspiring human. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, so that was that was a highlight of the year, that one. And Melbourne, yeah. Perth next year. Look out, look out, yeah, West Perth, Coast, really baby, pumped. we're coming. Perth is one of the only places I've had people reach out to me and say, hey, yeah. when you guys get to Perth, we yeah. are ready to go. Well, well, we had, when we did our... Perth at the Modern Advisor event. Yeah, a yeah, full-day yeah, event. We had a couple of guys fly over. over. It was yeah. crazy. You were, I, th- I think that... Perth, Perth, I mean, because Perth's so far away, they, they love anything that, that comes out to see them. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm really looking forward to going out. I'm big Kev. So, I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I think it's going to be fantastic. I, I, I genuinely believe there's going that there, there's a there's a community there that we just need to. You know, yeah, some ripping advisors over there as well. So awesome uh, businesses, really interesting the, client base. I, I imagine as well. Um, you know, we all we all know what the big economy is in the West. But the, the wealth designers, they're over there, right? Uh, I think yeah. they are. Yeah, I yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Some really good uh, business coaches over there. Might mm. get them involved. Who are you career. referring to? Yeah. Look out, look out. <laughs> yeah. Salvia. And Sue. <laughs> and Sue. And this Sue, Sue as well. Yeah. Solid yeah. game in the West. Solid yeah, business yeah, coaching yeah. game. Absolutely. Beautiful part of the world as well. Sue was one of the, the more popular podcasts for the year as well. So we know Definitely. people people tune in when she's involved. So Yeah. So what about the podcast? Who would have thought uh, that... You know what? What started as an afterthought from just taking the audio out of our out of our X Y Live the video sessions mm. um, would be so popular, but like the 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 community just just all over it. Yeah. The the funny thing is, if you look back at Blab, do you remember Blab? Oh, yeah. Shit. <laughs> so so that, good. That's going X Y Live. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's before we even had the 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 Transformers intro. Do, if, if if we go back to Blab, that was it. Wasn't even recorded. So for the first like six months, it was really live. It was it was truly just live, and there was no um there there was no recording. And I think we got lots of randoms because when yeah. when Clay and I were first checking it out, <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty entertaining. We had people in Ireland, like this Irish guy, yeah. spent about an hour with us just explaining what blab is. And... Okay, <laughs> and it and it's yeah. it doesn't even exist anymore. Right? No, ironically, two oh, two weeks after down. we swapped over, like it just shut down. It was. Yeah. It's quite and then even timing. and then and then we're just doing videos, I think, for at least a while. Yeah, just on yeah. YouTube. Yep. Yeah. Now on, onto the podcast. Do we have total downloads, Trey? Uh, in well, for the year, it's it's, it's certainly over three three thousand. Wow. Yeah. So it's... I'd be heaps more than that. No, no, it's about seven or eight thousand uh, just on. Uh, is my mic working properly? By the way, it sounds a little bit echoey, uh, at least in my cans. Um, yeah, it's so around the echo chamber upstairs. Yeah, cheers, mate. <laughs> um, so our biggest platform is still um, Facebook. Face the Facebook group. Mm. We, we get about five hundred per week uh, watching the video there. We get our, about a hundred per week on the YouTube. The YouTube. The YouTube, and on the podcast, uh, we get uh, about three to four hundred. So it's about it's it's just under a thousand on average of downloads or views per week, which is 
you know, considering uh, we kicked it off to learn because we're the enthusiasts and then uh, mentoring at scale because we all learnt so much from the AFA mentoring thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, look, it's it's crazy that it's actually turned into a, a thing on itself. So that's good. I've only ever listened to two podcasts in my whole life. So I'm just surprised that like <laughs> people just listen to podcasts. It's just a thing now. What are you on demand, man? What that's you on it. Demand? Well, I was, Gary I was on the way here this morning podcast. and I was listening to your podcast last week. <laughs> Yeah, Bit of well, Gary V. Gary V. Uh, was at an event in in Brisbane just recently, and he said that if you don't have an audio strategy in your business in three years, you'll be out of the game, basically. And he, but he says a lot, doesn't he? <laughs> but he has a very good knack for predicting predicting oh, trends. Look, a lot of these people have built a CV around chucking some money into Facebook. Uh, I don't know what else is he. You know, like actually, done? he talks a lot. But yeah. what else is he... He gets out a lot of content. Well, I think he's... I, I uh, listened to his Thank, vacuous, thank You Economy book uh, uh, recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like that that was written now, I don't know, seven or eight years ago or something. Mm. And all of the stuff that he said was was well on point. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah, probably ahead of its time for, for that time. Uh, but I know that, like, I was over in FinCon recently in the States and over there, podcasts, enormous. All the content yeah. providers over there, yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone's doing podcasts or thinking mm-hmm. about podcasts. And there's so many people that are just having like runaway success as a result of, of doing that. And I think for for advisors that it's a great way that if you can be in the ears of your your sort of ideal clients Definitely. on a regular basis, that's that's all relationship building, right? So, so yeah. if, if you've not... what What is FinCon for those that haven't been? So FinCon is a... Uh, four-day conference based out of the U.S. It's all financial content. Um, it's where money and media meet. Yeah, that, that's kind of okay. their uh, their slogan. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, but more not really traditional media. Although there was a little bit of that there, but mainly just different different content avenues. So blogging, podcasts. Um, yeah, like half the website. people say financial advisors, and half the people are bloggers or podcasters, rappers. Or, well, I didn't meet yeah, I didn't meet any up. advisors <laughs> over there. Didn't you? No. Oh. There, apart from the Aussie ones, there was a solid Aussie contingent. Because there, there. there is a contingent, an Aussie contingent. Yeah, right? it was like yeah, yeah. thirty five Aussies. Or something. You guys had t shirts so this year, didn't you? We had t shirts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. organised yeah. by uh, Glenn James and Peter Diamantides. So that was cool. It was awesome um, hanging out with all those guys over there. But yeah, yeah, that was that was my only real criticism, and I thought the conference was amazing. Would would go back in a heartbeat, but that a lot of it was about <laughs> blogging and about um you know these different types of content as opposed to being about um creating content for a service business it was like creating content for a content business so it was a lot of stuff about advertising revenue and affiliate Mm -hmm. marketing and i think it's different when you're a service business and you're trying to do content to reach your audience and to build relationships because you're not really doing that part for the money Mm -hmm. you're doing you run a business and that's that's like your profit generating yeah. enterprise and you're running a content strategy to so a lot of connect more people are stopping with where I, we I actually need to go into a full service offering off the back of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it yeah, I think it is slightly different. So I would have liked to have seen that. That being said, I got so much out of the out of the content that was there. So You'd recommend it? Absolutely. Yeah. Well you can just hang out with Adele Martin and that's like FinCon in a box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was some good good peeps over there so it was great great to learn the stuff great to build relationships with those guys don't know about dallas for a city though bit of a weird oh, place really? Dallas. Yeah, yeah. Really? it's like this intense like just big city not really much of a soul did you see many good open barbecue carry? though i like... did not see any open carry oh, okay. firearms no <laughs> that's a thing right it is yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, you can yeah. just carry you just carry no guys gun walking down the street with a shotgun like... no <laughs> yeah i don't know what the rule is about like big guns but no, we didn't see that. Although they have, in the, you go into like the souvenir shops over there and they've just got all these signs that say like, we don't call 911 in Texas. Oh, I mean, it's geez. just got like a picture of a gun. Like, <laughs> so awesome. Oh man. Yeah, it's intense. There's a few words for it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds like an alien planet to me. Mm. Dallas. Well, um, it wasn't long after we were there. They had that big, um, that big shooting over there. And stuff, oh, and so mate, I don't yeah, know if, the rules, Vegas, yeah. if the rules work so well. Oh but, yeah, um, I, t- I certainly wouldn't uh, trade trade what we've got here. Yeah. No, that could be able to carry a gun. Very good barbecue. All <laughs> oh, right, Texas barbecue, awesome. Mm. So, Tex-Mex. FinCon's in Orlando next year. 
I think there's there's already a solid crew of Aussies going over there. So well, I, I think FinCon's really important because, as you said, even though it's not particularly tailored to advisors, um, it's something that advisors like all small service based companies need to start considering because of where the world's headed. Mm. And so at the moment, everyone gives advice X, Y, Z way, but is there room to be valuable to clients and earn money, so valuable to yourself, by changing the structure? And that's kind of the, that's kind of the, um, the conversation that's happening at FinCon, right? So you've got, uh, this is how you do a podcast, this is how you do a blog, this is how you maximize all that stuff. And imagine if someone like Adele, right? Because she's really on the on on the cusp of this. Um, what happens if she turns around and you know two years from now doesn't have a traditional financial advice practice? Instead, she's got a Facebook group where everyone you know contributes a bit of money and she gives non-specific um, you know general advice. No so, SOA. Yeah, but yeah. Is that so, where the industry's heading? Well, Maybe. I mean, it's becoming well, so Clayton burdensome. A, Clayton almost went down that path. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or, it was a leading question. <laughs> <laughs> well, almost. I, I, and I think I, in the end, I, I wasn't ready to create another service-based business. But um, that that's absolute. Well, it's becoming so burdensome. Right, mm. we've got we've got a royal commission. You took coming the words out. out of my mouth. Yeah. Right. right? Like, mm. I mean, as if advice isn't hard enough. That's to guaranteed provide. to have great outcomes yeah. for everybody. There you involved. go. Have your AFSL <laughs> back. I'll me. I'll just write some generic helpful information it's... that people will pay me for. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, right? So all of these content, the big content-based businesses over in a state, all businesses, or like the people, the the popular ones, the people, the guys that were presenting at these FinCon events, they were all not financial advisors, and they weren't giving. They were just giving their thoughts, what had worked for them, yeah. general information, guidance. Not yeah. saying it's not obviously it's not financial advice, um, mm. and a lot of them didn't really have the financial backgrounds to totally. be able to even give mm. that advice anyway. But that didn't seem like a barrier because some of these people are just like millions, millions of mm. um, viewers or clickers or and making subscribers millions of dollars. Mm. Yeah, and making tons of money. Bigger yeah. market though. Much sure, but market, the, for sure. if you've got if Ray, you've got access to the internet. Therefore, you, you have the American market. Fair enough. Yeah. 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 Would you, is it like there's almost becoming an incentive to drop your AR status because then you're able to... It's definitely well, that, That's kind of the trend, right? But then, but then you think on the other side of the coin, if you're making it too cumbersome to actually be a, a, a licensed financial advisor, are you just making the barrier to entry irrelevant and then anyone's just going to start blogging their thoughts and does that engender good? But that already good? exists. But does that engender good? But it's a funny yeah. thing, right? Because like we had that event in Sydney uh, in in earlier in the year for the Beyond the SOA, and I think that you know advisors realise that most of the value, well, a lot of at least a big part of the value that we give to our clients is outside of the traditional financial advice. It's not mm. about choosing a super fund or choosing a tax structure or mm. you know all of that sort of stuff. It's just about coaching, accountability, making them do stuff, making them take action. Mm. All those sorts of well, things. It's like so, what um, uh, Catherine mentioned in the podcast you did with her the other week uh, around the logical versus the emotional piece. Yeah, yeah. Well, mm. she does a big. Uh, Catherine does a, a, a yeah great example of that where she does a lot of the out of the box uh, advice. She weaves in her professional coaching. She was talking about like that a lot of her clients they want they want her to be able to sit on the couch with them. She said yeah. and and just mm. just talk and and be there almost. <laughs> You know, like as as someone that they can, yeah, I suppose just bounce their thoughts off and and have there to support them, but with that background in in the financial side. Mm. Yeah, well. definitely. Like even if you're getting your calf muscle massaged uh, by a, a physiotherapist, it's great to know that they they spend their weekends, uh, you know, physioing for the Australian cricket team, for example, right? So you know, even if you you don't need that level of attention or that level of expertise. To get access to it as a as a client is a great sort of, mm. sort of source of security. So, say if someone just wants to talk about what they want to do in twenty years from now, it's still best to have a conversation with someone who knows a shit ton about money, rather than just the uncle that's sitting around the campfire, you know, doling out buy Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's your retirement plan. <laughs> I really, I really wonder though, and I don't want to beat the drum on the, the education thing, but then it, re, you know, are we, are we doing ourselves a disservice running around and becoming really technical when it comes to, you know, understanding 
financial strategies when when the true value is managing the client. Um, the so you learn technical stuff. Sometimes, <laughs> mate. Well, no, but you know, one of, one of the confronting things that I had to learn about four years ago was: is it valuable for me to do a CFP or do a psychology degree? I went mm. down the psychology p- the p- path, and I could, you know, one one has left me much better place to to help manage a, a client through through a financial plan. Yeah, agreed. Um, and is that because you struggle with math? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy when the clients don't have very much. No. I, re- I reckon. Um, <laughs> I reckon what the outcome is coming in the next few years is just that, like people, there's no there's no oversupply of advisors as there is. So when you're coming from a state where there's no oversupply and there's like there's so much need out there and people aren't getting it now and then you're putting more impediments into people becoming advisors and the cost to deliver mm. putting more barriers for um, the number of people out there so in terms of people coming into the industry whether it's through the education pathways expanding people dropping out of the industry and also just in general the cost to deliver advice like the outcome, the bad outcome is actually for just anyone, like the Australian people in general. Mm. Like yeah. I think the barrier should be high. I think it should be higher. Like the barrier to entry, it mm-hmm. shouldn't be easy. They, and, you know, we saw this a lot with all of the uh, sort of the nonsense that was going on with, with changes in LIF and a lot of people resisting and saying, now, uh, you know, you get rid of upfront comms and I can't, I can't run, a, run a business. It's like, if you can't run a business with without upfront comms you shouldn't have a business like it's, it's you're not supposed to be able to just walk out of you walk out of a job one day and then walk straight into a financial advice business i think you should have to plan for it you should have to save for it but like any other business you don't expect to go open a convenience store or a you know a childcare center and be able to just do it in a day. I think I think that there should be a barrier. But the it's cost... good that you shifted to the childcare center because yeah, anyone can open a convenience store. It's not like <laughs> you do a five year convenience store degree. <laughs> hey, it can be pretty technical. Have, have a you master's seen how many flavors in of chewing gum they've got these days? <laughs> but but okay. seriously, the cost to serve thing that that's a big issue. I think yeah. that you know. Yeah, you're right in that it, that just um, disadvantages the, the the advice consumers really when that makes it more difficult, more technical, um, more There's expensive. There's less people out there. There's a higher barrier, yeah. barrier, barrier to entry for us or for yeah. the industry. Is a higher for barrier us. for the consumer as well, right? Because it's more expensive to build well, a business I think in a people presence. are more skilled these days. Like obviously the education requirements are, are sort of coming in, and there's people that have been doing the job for a long time and. You know, there there is. I think that there should be some sort of measures to, you know, ensure that if they're confident that they can they can give advice. But you know, I think in the future, most people these days have got degrees, and if not double degrees and master's degrees. So I don't think that's a you know a massive entry barrier, really. But I think around actually starting a business, um, yeah, there should there should be barriers around that you know mm. like the, the, chal- it- the challenge however with all this like the breadth of what's covered in this education is that 80 percent of it sort of sits on the table a lot of the time and it only comes out when you get certain clients like a lot of advisors are dealing with people where the complexity is just not there to actually put into use this education it's great and like it gets a bit exciting when you actually do have something that's a bit more technical and you can do a bit of a strategy but a lot of people it's actually not that complex it's it's more the behavior piece, like exactly what you do with your business, Ben. Like you're yeah. not, you've got all the technical knowledge. So when a client comes along and they need it, but a lot mm. of the time you're just, do, you're doing coaching with people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it is so pretty like, simple. When it's yeah. only, when you're only using 20, 30% of actually that technical knowledge <laughs> most of the time, you're like. Oh. I, I love it, Ben, that you could probably still know how to calculate and maximize a, a, a 54, 11 CSS to find yeah. benefit pension, but but I'm sure if you got one of those clients these days, you'd be like, nah, refer. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, Hill, Steve Nielsen mate, I got and, one for you. And yet you're probably but you did all the education. Yeah, you're, you're probably one of you know, uh, it'd be in the top sort of echelon of advisors who could mm. do that. And yet, you, nah. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I tend not to. Well, it's not really my market, and and we're seeing those those. Why isn't of, it your market then? Because it's older people. Only older people have got um, defined benefits, yeah. pensions, because they're true. sort of phasing them out these days. But you're right that, you know, I've, I've studied a ton. Like, a, I've got two master's degrees on top of my bachelor's. And I looked at, as you said, doing um, some... And I actually started both the, the CFP and the FCHFP. But then when I started my business, I just realized that there was so much... So many other things that I needed to learn that were going to be so much more valuable to me 
from a business sense, um, but also valuable to my clients that mm. I've had to sort of park that until upskill around things like, you know, coaching and engagement and uh, content and, you know, and how did you go about doing that? Because, you know, a bachelor degree of psychology isn't for everybody. So, so what, yeah. was, what was kind of your approach? Uh, well, look, man, I'd love to, I'd love to do that at some point. Uh, and I studied a little bit of psychology when I was, when I was back at uni, but, um, uh, really through through things like avenues like XY Advisor, learning off uh, learning off the community and, and mm, other people. I know definitely. we all sh- we all share a lot between each other. Mm. Um, mentors, you know, I've been um, Dean Holmes been helping me out for ages, uh, and it, you know he's a great source for business related things. And that was a really steep learning curve for me. With you know I I'd, uh, mainly I'd work with some business clients, but the actual operational side of a business, a lot of stuff, a lot of just Totally. You know, complexity around doing that so that was a, that was a learning curve you know mm-hmm. bookkeeping business management and then really it's been a journey around content and and really working on you know writing and in, engaging how to how to actually get the message out and you're in a mastermind with uh, vince scully right yeah man our mastermind's epic oh. yeah so we got vince um nick from from he's at macquarie now from previously from pro advisor and uh, Mark Boyd and yeah, it's been great catching up with those guys. Um, great little group. Mm. Been learning heaps. I think everyone's at different stages and, and learning off each other. But um, you know, Nick's just sort of starting out with Macquarie and building out his service offering. Um, Mark's in the process of sort of uh, being a succession plan for the business that he's in, and uh, Vince's business obviously pretty epic. So. I've been sort of hitting him up as much as I can, uh, learning. But Vince has been helping me. We're uh, working on uh, getting a CRM in the business at the moment, yeah. And sort of building out a um, a sales force. Instance recently been talking to the guys from Practify. I think we'll probably go down that way. But it's just been great to to have that resource. And I think you know, well, this is how XY all started. That uh, mm. and I think the strength of the advice community in general. That whenever I had a problem ever, I'll just go and find three people that that did that thing well and then just speak to them all figure out what worked for mm. me and then you know make it happen yeah. so it's awesome. definitely the backbone of xy so. absolutely it's, it's not like we uh create an environment for people to share people are always sharing mm. uh it's, it's amplified just, it we, we just sort of stuck a badge on it that's mm. all you know uh and i think the reason why xy advisor the name caught on is because it's only two letters away from sexy advisor <laughs> at the end of the day <laughs> that's got to be it that's that's oh, are you advocating for was. your annual award for xy advisor uh, yeah the, the, the special executive s the special executive xy advisor let's not forget the podcast got better when videos got taken away <laughs> <laughs> Basis for radio. <laughs> um, ben, what, what what other sort of themes have we seen in twenty seventeen? I know you're quite quite keen on you know yeah a couple of couple of key key areas. Yeah, well, we saw obviously the so the Facebook group started in uh, January. 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 Yeah, uh, and I think it's been. I I think it's fair to say that we've been blown away with with you know how how many people have been keen to to get in there and share and share what they're doing yeah. digitally. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Compared to almost, LinkedIn. Oh, oh yeah. Well, it's LinkedIn. almost 1,400 people. Yeah. yeah but, but I think it's like the, the yeah, I, I think it's weird. Like, personally, I'd never really, maybe I'm a, a bit weird on the digital side. As I said, I'm not, not a big one for podcasts, but I've never really been in like a Facebook group and interacted heavily or, you know, seen it, got heaps of value out of it. But, yeah, I think that group, it's just been so many people just sharing sharing what they're doing, sharing some of their, their IP, which has been mm. awesome, but mm. jumping in and helping people answer questions. And I know like um, I, I've interacted with a bunch of people on there. When we went up to the to the Queensland event, I met a couple of them for the first time, Lee Smith and a couple of other guys. Mm. And we've been interacting online. It was like, you know, when they talk about that stuff on, the, on TV and they're like, these kids these days, they're like, making relationships online and stuff. And I'm just like, oh my God, this is so weird. But it was cool that I was like, oh, Lee. I was like, cool, man. Like, yeah, I've actually done like that I know heaps. you. I like, walk up to yeah. someone at yeah. any event pretty much. I'm like, yeah. I recognize your, your Look at the name badge. Yeah, yeah, the face. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's amazing that, that that sort of forum is helping people to to build those relationships and then they can take them offline and, and do things to, mm. you know, help, help themselves uh, learn as well. But I think we've seen, there's a bit of, you know, a, a big theme, I think, for, for the engagement in the group has been 
around digi- digitalizing, digitizing, mm. digitalizing, mm. something like that. Digital Adopting going online. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like online, using, using, um, using our computer technology, <laughs> online fashion. <laughs> yeah. Computer. Um, yeah, so like doing those things, online fact finds, and, yeah. and just making services really easy for clients to consume. And I think that's something that friction. as an industry we've been really bad at mm. uh, historically. I, so. I think it's really us. It's almost, I don't know, Clay's always talking about product market fit when he's talking about new businesses. It's almost us moving towards the client a bit more than... And us, as opposed to seeing up in our over tower, well, this is how yeah. we do things. Yeah, you guys can come back, meet Fill in this back fine. We'll yeah. and post it back to well, us. Well, this is so. our time. Our time's valuable. But clients, are, they don't want to do that. Yeah, like it's, it's got to be easy. you got to go to them, make it easier. I just quite love, love the idea that someone can, you know, sort of type through an idea that they might have. And, you know, traditionally, you'd go back to your licensee or you'd go to the senior people in a business or yeah. the like. And, you know, there's there's plenty of going there's plenty going on which which will influence what it, it, you might get back but now it's just like hey guys I had this idea this is what i've built what are your thoughts yeah and, and brrr, 80 comments <laughs> yes <laughs> literally 300 comments a day yeah. it gets up to you know like yeah. who, 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 that hence why we've had to hire moderators yeah you know mm-hmm. we, we can't watch that that's <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. fantastic. But what an amazing resource for I think for um, oh, yeah, I, I know I've used it myself a bunch of times. Like this, I've, I've been as I mentioned, I'm looking at CRMs at the moment. Yeah. Throw that in, into the group. I've got a, a bunch of great feedback from people. I've spoken to a number of people that have got experience uh, using them, and I think that that's that's just so valuable as an that's advisor so valuable, and, and, and yeah. an advice business. It's so, just making it easy for people to find people that have the same problems or um, can help with each of, each other's problems. Like exactly. it's just making it efficient. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think that 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 engagement piece uh, is a is a big theme, and then also into automation, like into business processes. But then, it, like automating as much as possible, and I think that that's part of, as you mentioned before, the the um, trying to reduce the cost to serve, make it easier to mm. um, to to work with the with with clients as well. One of the one of the awesome side effects that we had had no thought of when we went into it is like the impact on the product and service providers so the amount of i've talked to so many bdms yeah. out there business support people that are just like they're just getting into their role there and the amount that they're learning by just being in the group oh right and learning like new bdms or whatever oh existing bdms mm. new bdms or junior bdms yeah, like yeah, just yeah. Learning good insight about advice because advisors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they're coming in this world they're coming from this product provider they mm. get a certain they only hear what they're told there and what they see there they haven't been in the advice mm. business before the That's insights that you can get by being in the xy advisor group and the problems and yeah like it's just it's and, and the service product and service providers mm. have been pretty good on the group. Yeah. In, in yeah. the early days, we set those. those... Well, it's because you've you've hung a few of them. Haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second, I, I haven't. Uh, so, but but, but in the early days, it was how do we how do you know what do we do here? Mm. Uh, and and we got pretty strict pretty quickly. There's a bit of work. Bit yeah. of leg work in the especially days. especially with our friends, you know, there, mm, there were people yeah. like our mates, and and we, we were like, oh, I don't think that's good. Yeah, Can very we, difficult. But I think that now really hard actually. Like yeah, it, and but I think I think it's all been worked out in the wash. But for those first, we just to get that consistency months. Yeah, when we had to sort of be a little bit harsh on people that we like, that sucked. Yeah, yeah. agreed. But yeah, I think that now they're. Uh, like I know the AIA guys have been really good with this Mel and, and her guys oh, like yeah. answering so, some technical questions from the yeah. product side and yeah. it's great to get that oh, that totally. line and I think Definitely. I've used it a couple of times actually with uh, I had a couple of difficult cases on the insurance side and just put it there and then you see like the keen <laughs> PDMs and they're like send me this send me the message and it's like they're nice. I think as an advisor that's helpful because on a couple of fronts but one you're getting access into the people but two it's like the it's almost like you you not a complaint, but like you tweet a thing. You're inspiring about a company. Uh, it's change. Like, it looks it looks good for the for the reps if they're like you know keen and and want to be helpful. And I know that those guys and they were they were really mm. helpful in those cases. And you know I ended up getting this case that I didn't even think that I, I was going to be able to get cover for. That's uh, awesome. Sort of, so I think uh, it was great, and I've seen a lot of other examples of that sort of stuff on there as well. Yeah, so. it's a bit of leverage. So yeah, so I think that's that's great. Uh, one of the other things that I, I noticed a lot of discussion on uh, is around pricing. 
uh, and pricing commissions mm. and uh, the trend towards, I think that there's more people, they seem to be moving more towards the fee, fee-based fee advice or fee-only advice, mm. much, much more than it's been in the past. Probably prompted by the... LAF. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, but see a lot of questions in the group around around pricing and I think that we'll probably see more uh, as more, yeah. pe- more people sort of adjust to the change. Well, essentially, the, the, the pricing is just, it's it seems quite simple when you look at it but it actually reflects the whole business model. Yeah. And that's why, like, the when we're sharing our pricing schedules in the... It's almost sharing your business model. Because mm. it's like, well, this is your upfront and this is your ongoing. Yeah. You see this many clients, this is how much money the business makes. And, like, the way the way you charge, for example, like, a lot of people... What, extortionist? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, they sign. He's a quality <laughs> benchmark as opposed to a um, pricing benchmark. <laughs> <laughs> but it is hard, right? It's hard with fee-only advice. Like I, I know that in in my business, uh, you know, we've been fee-only since since I started the business. Previously, I had an asset-based fee, and this year I've I've been in the process of, of stripping out the asset-based yeah, fee. Right. How have your clients and, gone with that? Yeah, they've been good. For for a lot of them, they're they're fairly close to the, the where where it would be almost the sort of the same. For some of them, it's a, it's a, it is a little bit more, but they also then see that um, that they will be better off in the future as well. Mm. So I haven't had any pushback yeah, at all. As soon as you move away from the percentage, if, even for the asset base, then property becomes an obvious opportunity to talk about as well because you're not conflicted. That That's obviously the, the yeah. big... The well, big you elephant, know. right? Well, yeah. actually, though, it's it's been more the other way, and this is part of the the reason why I think it was important to make that change because with the, with the rise in property prices recently and the changes in, in um, lending... And, and borrowing rules and you know moving to more principal and interest type payments I'm getting more and more people that are having investment accounts as opposed to buying property mm. so to move away from the percentage based fee I like I just wanted to make sure that none of my clients felt that that I was su- suggesting that because mm. we we're getting paid more so just removing that that potential conflict out of the well Clayton you, out of the process. that's not necessarily an issue around the percentage charging you just actually have to charge a percentage on the property price or the property valuation of the client. Yeah, right. Is that what you do? No. <laughs> that's pretty ballsy. Do you manage the, the rental property as well? I think that's actually against the law, right? You can't charge, well, if there's charge gearing, yeah. Percentage fees on be, good yeah. assets. Yeah. yeah. It would have to be the net amount, which would still be pretty good in I hope, I, hope, I, hope I hope AMP are listening to this. Adrian, <laughs> it's Adrian Paddy. Um, you'll find him at the Coogee Pavilion. Uh, <laughs> Car number two seven four. Uh, it's the beachside office. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess you know one one of the opportunities then for X Y is to actually create a bit more of a formal structure for some of these awesome conversations that we've started to see in the Facebook group. And I know because everyone seems to be getting plenty of value out of this stuff. It's certainly something that's on all of our minds for next year to then really really put that into a into an environment or put that into a, a structure where people can be really specific about you know particular topics going directly to the i guess the vetted content experts mm. on a on a matter uh and and accessing that at a at a very low low you know barrier to entry mm. um so i think that's probably one of the things that i think is really exciting for for the group going forward is is that opportunity yep memberships coming mm. yeah membership site I, I wonder if will we will we get there in january end of january it's all up to ben Oh, oh right, yeah. I'm all, I'm all over that. I know my I know my way around the CMS. That was strategic. <laughs> Clay's like, um, so I'm gonna have the new logo ready. Um, you sorted, I'm done. My you sorted job. everything my else job. out, Ben. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm quietly. You got to do it. It's on the podcast, quietly mate. Confident. It's gonna be very close to the end of January, if not exactly. The we've end got of some, January. we've got some amazing content. Oh yeah, yeah. providers to launch mm. with. Oh my god. Yeah. It's going to be and epic. So, and, I've been looking at the content this weekend, actually. Some mm. of the guys that, that uh, have sent could, sent through the stuff. Could you imagine and, 50, what, 45 bucks a month for this? I know. <laughs> and, yeah. you know it sounds like a major plug, and it probably is. But, <laughs> but literally, we're trying to give the best for the smallest amount. Yeah. Which is, you know, and, and, the, and these guys that are providing that content. I mean, and these, these instructors, the people that are, that are teaching these courses, are. Um, they run businesses where they're, yeah. they're charging thousands, if not tens of thousands yeah, of yeah. dollars for mm. for their for their sort of expertise. So, 
Well, not to mention some of the advisors. So there's some awesome advisors that are so passionate about what they do that they want to share it with the rest of the community. Absolutely. I think that's, I'm I'm always really stoked when an advisor is willing to do that. And just to be very clear, this isn't going to be charged at the Facebook group level. (laughs) This is over and above. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what do you mean? So those conversations that are going on at the moment in the Facebook group, We'll uh, continue. We'll continue. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, just an ad- it's an additional thing. Yeah, Absolutely. and we're never charging for the Facebook group. No. That 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 was a t- well. It's not really ours to charge for. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, the, it's, the, I mean, uh, there's a lot of business models that that do charge off platform and then just hold it on Facebook. But we decided we weren't going to charge for Facebook group for yeah. masterminds for the podcast um, because literally this hobby of ours is about driving the positive evolution of financial advice. And we can't do that if we're going to start charging for all the things that we've been doing for free. And then this one thing that we are charging for, it's super cheap anyway. So it's pretty cool. Very um, exciting stuff. Yeah. yeah. I am pumped. But yeah, 31st of January. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Better get it sorted, Ben. Wait, it's in the, it's in the, it's in the pipeline. <laughs> yeah. So, so what else? We've got the, well, we spoke about the events. So we know that we're actually, there's a proper national agenda. There's a nice um, pipeline of next um, year. events. Oh, we've got the party coming up this Friday. We do indeed. We do indeed. This Friday. Where is Sydney it? Sydney Peeps. Yeah, yeah, it's down at um, down at Customs House Bar, which isn't Key Bar, outside Customs House. Oh, yeah. Just Below wait. Cafe Sydney. On the, on the, it's Wait, not, it's not that one. Oh, it's not it's Cafe not, Sydney. No. So where's this one? No, this what? one, this one's just off Bridge Street. Okay. Uh, on the left. Yeah. There's, there's... Cafe Sydney. That's in Customs House, right? This oh, is Customs House. Oh, you're talking Customs about like House the one near the park. On Alfred Street. Yeah, it's oh. near the park. Oh, oh right. Right. Anyway, that one. Customs House Bar. Look at it. Good up. beer Customs selection House there. Bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So everyone just come down there, right? Yeah, please do. And then next year we should try and do a Christmas party in, in every city as well right yeah. That'd be i don't mad. think we agreed to that no but we should definitely try and do that <laughs> like a if, virtual if, one if there's if there's mastermind groups all over australia well, why, why you, not yeah totally and just send, I think them, that's, send them a budget you know? that's probably another big one as well and this is specifically well not specifically but especially if you're in regional areas of australia uh, one of our pursuits is xy mastermind which are groups of you know four to twelve people getting mm. together uh, you know, like Ben was talking about earlier, just sharing awesome things that they're doing, um, asking questions in person. Um, and, you know, we, we, we like the idea of people getting together in, in person. So one of our pursuits for next year is actually getting really good <laughs> at, <laughs> at, at Mastermind and, at and, it, and yeah. really, really helping people with the structure to, to make it as easy as possible. Um, you know, one, one, of the, one of our uh, close friends, Dylan, uh, had a conversation with us. He's, he's based in Wollongong and he said, you know, these things are awesome, but, uh, you know, everything seems to be in Sydney and, you know, with a young family that, you know, it takes up a long, a, a lot of his day and it's not mm. easy for him to, to do that. He really needs to make a decision about whether or not he's going to, to mm. miss an afternoon and night with his family. So we're thinking, you know, there's, there's easily, you know, a dozen Dylans in, in uh, Wollongong that probably just haven't had an opportunity to meet, meet each other. So let's mm. just build that. Um, well, even that um, the Shane Hayes group, which is they operate on they're Zoom. They're all over the place. Yeah, and like that's like top of top of the tip of Queensland, North sort of thing, yeah. over to Western Australia. Yeah, and it's one of the most engaged groups because they don't get. It's hard to get access to. Totally, totally. Yeah. So, so if if you especially if you're regional, please, please, please get in contact with mm. us. We'll we'll desperately do everything we can uh, to get you in a mastermind group and have awesome conversations with people that. Uh, just want to shoot the breeze with you and uh, you know share share their IP. Have we got something coming out on that? In yeah, ab- ab- absolutely. So thirtieth uh, of January, just so I can <laughs> <laughs> beat you. No, no. <laughs> uh, speaking of really engaged groups, how's yours going, Patty? Which group? Uh, mastermind group. <laughs> yeah, it's it's killer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 High so, attendance every week. Good, um, good, good. It, it's it's not not a horrible point. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, well, I am, you have to I'm, be really selective in the mastermind leaders you so pick, right? Just just for those that <laughs> might not know whether or not they're still in a group or not, I am doing a bit of an audit on on the current allocations, what groups are working, what groups are not. So if if you're not sure, if you feel like you're in a little bit of limbo, um, again, please please reach out to me. But I'll I'll certainly be reaching out to to especially the the, the leaders or the heads of the groups and just. Getting a bit of a sanity check on on, on what's working and, and what's not. How and many that. Adrians are out there? Yeah, <laughs> hopefully not too many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it, it's a, it's a wonderful yeah. thing, you know. And and I think those that are doing it, you heard Ben earlier, like he's getting he's he's in a cracking oh, yeah. business Amazing. and he's getting awesome, yeah, awesome so experience out of it. So. so good. I think that that's uh, 
yeah, it's great to have the all the online community and and have the events and you have a you know have, you have a good chat with people and it's always fun to to catch up. But really, the masterminds are about yeah, really diving deeper uh, mm. and and learning from each other. So I think it's hugely valuable. How what many have you got in your group? We just got four. Four, yeah, and that works. Four, four works well for yeah. us. I find I I personally I find it you know it's a challenge to. Uh, to sort of always to align with with everybody i think we we had to we had to cancel one of our meetings but outside of that we've met every month and we just locked it in the diary for last friday of the month or something so recurring um, recurring so it's in there we've moved it a couple of times because there was some things things Life sort of happens, happening people yeah. people going going away that sort of stuff uh, but i found that that works really well because it's hard mm. to you know everyone's busy you know all of the the guys that are in my group have, have, have got a, a lot of stuff on their plate so I find that that's helpful, but yeah, I think that with um, with more people, it gets it gets more difficult to coordinate. But that being said, I know that there's other groups that are bigger and and they just have you know that it's just the expectation mm. that everyone's probably not going to be there each time, and that mm. works for them as well. So I think you just got to find got to find what works. Well, for I'd you. probably say also for people who have considered mentoring and maybe have quite a lot of experience and wondering what value they'd get out of it. Maybe thinking about this is a really good opportunity for you to give back to the younger advice mm. generation and, um, and share some of your knowledge because that's that's also a factor. Some of the guys that are in these groups, they're actually not necessarily getting too much personally out of them because they've got such great experience, but they're just mm. really enjoying sharing and helping out. And, and if yeah. you're feeling like that out there, like definitely get involved because there's lots of guys that would love to yeah. leverage off um, your experience. And, yeah. And yeah. I think that's one of the questions that we had at the start. We were saying, should we pair people with the same sort of experience? Like people with it a lot was, of experience yeah. with other people with a lot of experience, people with less with, with people with less. And I think mm. where we landed uh, and, and happy to get feedback from anyone that, that wants to give it, but uh, that it is good to have, you know, how do we collectively get better? Mm. How do we make advice, advice evolve? And it's, it's having the people that are newer to you know, they're, they're generally not new, but they're newer to the industry with less mm. experience. Partner them up with the guys with with all the experience, mm. and uh, you know, you can't you can't help but get better. Uh, mm. I know totally, that that's, totally, that's, uh, yeah. And if you are a younger advisor, what an awesome thing to be able to take back to your practice and say, hey, talking to the community, these are the things that other people are working on. Does mm. that work for us? And you know, what an awesome place to put yourself in in, in a business if if you're yeah. a little younger as well. Well, you've got you've got high quality people like uh like glenn Hare and jess brady who uh recently started their what their a business. business name by the way oh fox can we just give a little bit of a clap stuff. for that one <laughs> <laughs> absolutely but every it, you know in their preparation everything was fantastic but um you know six months ago when when they were you know getting closer and closer to setting up i i said have you been on the XY advisor group yet? And they said, oh yeah, we went on the page. And I said, oh, no, 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 not the page. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, pa the page gets, you know, like one post a month and one like, <laughs> find the group. And then, uh, and then the next time we spoke, I said, you know, how, how are you finding it? And they said, it's been invaluable for them to launch mm. their business with that resource mm -hmm. up their sleeve. And, you know, just, just uh, having so many advisors because there's, it's not like everyone on there is 30 years old either. Like, that's the majority. Mm. The, the large majority is sort of about Below 30. 45, right? Yeah. Mm. But we do have a handful of, of older We advisors. had over 65. Yeah. And, 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 and those, those guys, and while they're a very small subset of the group, they're, they're, they're often got the most to say about things. Mm. Uh, and so you, you are learning a lot about advice from that perspective as well mm. and as it's, well as younger advisors and it's like two-thirds advisors which means 1400 people mm. there's almost a thousand advisors right yeah. like actual advisors yeah. or 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 like associate aspiring advisors so uh that's a that's an amazing resource Man. i think that sort of level and i think normally with these groups you get and there's great um you know technical people and product people in the industry but in my view, there's 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 nothing better than learning from someone that's done it before. Yeah. Mm. So. Well, like, it'd be remiss of you not to grab a coffee or a beer and shoot the breeze, right? Pinch their ears off them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For one of a, of a better description, right? Well, so. I guess enough patting ourselves on the back around the Facebook group, guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, we're I'm just not, I'm not sure about... if we're patting ourselves on the back. I think I'm patting everyone else. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. I. Mm. I. Yeah. I mean, we we put it out there, but. 
it's it's got a life of its own. I think. Yeah, that Definitely. is the coolest part of it. Yeah. yeah, it's just I I just think that the the growth is sort of reflective of of the new wave of advice and how keen people are to mm. to learn and and grow as advisors. You know, you see people in there. Clay was saying three hundred like comments a day or. Um, not you know, always, but it has reached that. It's crazy. Yeah, I know. We're, well, we're running it into the thousands, you know, on a monthly basis. And uh, to me, that doesn't say anything about XY Advisor. That says something about the advice industry and the, and the people that are there, mm. you know, writing writing posts about online fact finds at 10 o'clock on a Sunday night. Like, mm, these totally. people are passionate about advice. That would I definitely think... be one of the self-employed advisors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what are you guys working on uh, this time of year? Do you guys do business planning? I was wondering about that. I'm working on trying not to attend too many Christmas parties. That's <laughs> yeah, I'm doing drink a day December. Yeah, that's fantastic. It's so far so good. How you going? Yeah, yeah, Looking yeah. Looking trim, mate. Ah, oh, stuff. Keep, keep going. Keep going. Tell me more. Does that like 500 mil glass of wine you had with us last Sunday? Does that, is that was that one drink? Just for the record. Well, one bottle. He buys a bottle. One bottle equals half a drink, right? <laughs> of course. Of course. I've been working on uh, swimmer day. Yeah. So it's, oh yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, summer times here. It's sort of. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, nice going one. down the beach. Nice one. But not so no so no business planning. <laughs> yeah, I do it out in the water. It's... <laughs> We've actually found it as a um, we looking looking to work with a, a couple of accountancy practices, and I've just set up a joint venture with one in uh, in North Sydney, and he does a lot of business planning. So this is typically a, a down downtime for him, but it's been a wonderful opportunity to spend time at his office and diving into his CRM and identifying what opportunities mm. and going through the data and, and putting out a, a bit of a plan for for next year. It's awesome. Uh-huh. Um, so we're we're kind of busy. Uh, which is which is really lovely, actually. Yeah, we yeah. we get busy this time of year. I think it's like the new year, especially in the the younger sort of demographic. Mm. It, it gets people thinking about their money for sure. Yeah, uh, and when things are quieter as well, it's always a good opportunity to sort of mm. get yourself set for the oh. new year. Tech, yeah. Time for some more technology. Absolutely. <laughs> well, this is I'm going deep into data at the moment with all this CRM stuff. It's uh, yeah. how it's come, amazing. How come you chose not to say go Salesforce, for example? Well, it is Salesforce. <laughs> no, no, no. So it, it's Practify. Oh, yeah. So why well, didn't you just go Salesforce? Well, I, that was that was the path that I was going down. Um, but uh, because I, my business is a little unique in, in a few ways, and there was some particular information that I, that I wanted that I figured I would need to customize. And I started talking to this developer that I found, but... Um, and, and he is awesome and we, we're going to do some stuff together but when you build a, a Salesforce from scratch you have to get it up to the point where it's just a page where it's got the fields that you need you know the name the income stuff like all of those things you have mm. to actually build that in and I was talking to to the developer and it was like it was going to cost me like seven and a half thousand dollars or something just to get to the point where it had mm. the stuff that I would need just for normal stuff but what I really want to get to is document automation and you know full-on sort of workflow management all of that sort of stuff and that would be like the next level so um yeah the the practify solution sort of allows you to customize and add on what you want but they've already sort of built the base so right okay so i think that'll end up being uh being much cheaper plus you can sort of get into it faster yeah mm-hmm. actually i'm going to make a big call for next year that the technology advice consumer is going to regain power what, wait, what does that mean? Technology. So, for the really? last 10 years, <laughs> well, the last 10 years, the power has been with the technology providers. The dependency that practices have had gotcha. on technology providers has been huge. They, they can't move because it's expensive. They don't know how to move half the time because oh, things have been made gotcha. so complex. Right, yeah. X plan coin is stuck there. Exactly. Right, gotcha. Where it's been an all or one, one solution. Mm. Next year is going to be the year where things are shifting and the providers are going to have to start delivering exactly what us as the consumers want because other people will be doing it and we'll work with them if the other providers don't and it's just going to happen like it's the market's yeah. playing out and it's and it's because of the way technology has evolved so it's going more cost effective to do all these integrations the, the Zapier poss- Zapier we, all, we almost went through the podcast without mentioning Zapier <laughs> I, had Julian, I, I had Julian Plummer pretty much crash tackle me at, um, at Alex Vikovic's book launch the other night People keep on asking me about Zapier. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon the uh, the sexy toy of twenty eighteen will be? You know, we talked about Zapier. Cri- crypto, nah, that's crypto like, currency, that's so obviously. 2017, um, yeah, you know, goal, goals based <laughs> advice was a was a big thing 
this mm. year, uh, and that was mm. kind of the I, I won't say flavor of the month, but you know I've certainly got my views on on that. I reckon data, data, and what you do with it is going to be the new thing. So all the players that are like the money sauce, money brilliance, uh, my prosperity, they've only just started to they're capturing all this data, and um, a lot of the business models are starting to evolve into the analytics space. And for mm. example, when Ben gets his um, system up and running and what I'm doing with my business, mm. you're starting to pull in a whole lot more data sets and they'll have some data sets. And then we've got all this other data that we actually capture from a client that no one else captures. Mm. And by linking that together, the insights and the interplay between just the standard bank data and credit card data and the stuff we know about clients, I don't know what the insights are going to be, but there's mm. going to be stuff that we're going to be able to do and anticipate for clients that we weren't able to do before. Like one of the key things I'm, I presented to in the FBA Congress was that we're no longer going to have to go ask a client what happened over their year. We're going to be telling, we're going to be going, Yeah, wow. oh shit, Clayton, Clayton, this has been occurring for Clayton. He bought better, that diamond on the internet. Yeah, <laughs> with that Bitcoin. Must something. <laughs> <laughs> we need to cut we, that. <laughs> <laughs> we need to, yeah, exactly. And we need to talk to Clayton because he's obviously making some decisions and um, fantastic decisions. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. Oh mate, that's oh. the best decision you could ever make. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Oh. He's got he's got a good better half, Clay. Yeah. So is Ben. So data, Clay. Can you stuff. tell us much about Sprout? Oh, I I, I won't bring Sprout in, but um, as far as data is concerned, uh, for example. Client acquisition is getting very, very articulate when you start using data. So I, Luke Gilroy is is, is on our uh, XY advisor group. Uh, he ex planner now. Um, Salesforce now in Salesforce, yeah. right? So I was having some really good chats to him about data, and he was saying that these CRMs. So I don't know if Practify can do this, um, but can track each person how many times they come onto the website right so one two three times might go on this page that page and it will it will complete a profile about each individual individual person and then you're going to have uh at some point you're going to have ibm watson providing you you know data around how people like to be sold to right so or adrian for example when he goes on to a website three times and receives an email and then a call mm. ha- ha- has a purchase uh, rate of 80% or whatever. Mm. And then Adrian's on my website. He's been uh, to the website two times. So now I'm going to make that offer to him. And that offer is going to be something that he likes. And then I'm going to give him a call. And that client acquisition, like that big data and that level, like mm. I'm not sure personally if I enjoy that. Well, what, I'm, what I'm talking about is going next level to that. Next and it's level like, to that? Yeah, man. That's a that's, matrix that's, shit, That's, man. that's 2016 stuff. <laughs> oh, HubSpot, okay. HubSpot do that, though. And yeah. I think um, Glenn and Jess, they, I was chatting to them about about uh, their setup of HubSpot for their business. And what it's is HubSpot? HubSpot is sort of like a CRM, I think, right. from my understanding. Uh, and and it base but it does all of that tracking, so you can have custom campaigns, yeah, depending on the, the sites or the pages that are Dude. visited. The next level is, but is how that then plays out in the advice process, and like the correlation between. Oh, wow. Yeah, because you you've got that data there, and as you connect it to everything else that goes on in the advice process, spending profiles of these people, you start to understand when people that do that, they have that problem. Or like you can see cause causation between things because you've got you've got the data through that whole journey of the client, and bringing that together is that's when you that's it's, yeah, it's I think just that, the open... I think that the CRM thing is uh, it, it, like CRM or using data effectively. Obviously, that's some you know your matrix shit, but um, <laughs> like pe- because this is like the next stage for all the people that are doing the online forms and the and the um, you know the engagement piece at mm. scale, but then. Bu- connecting it in and this is exactly why we're setting up a crm in our business because that's the that's the next level where the the, mm, the information's yeah. all already like um digital mm. it's just connecting them together and i think that that as you rightly say patty the the tech providers these days it's right really if they don't api and they don't start integrating with the things that, that we want mm. they're going to be left behind because that's that's so critical now i know that mm. that's the, the how you choose your well, if we don't do that we'll be left behind 
So well, you have to, yeah. yeah. And I think that it's, um, you know, I know Julian's all over this. That I've, I've spoken to him about it a couple of times, but oh, Silverlight. <laughs> <laughs> that um, that the businesses, you know, midwinter do advice tools really, really well. But then, but they're, 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 they admit that they're not the best CRM in the market, that there's so like a sales force or, or something else out there that it can do more of what you want. Plus the fact that everyone's business is different and there's all these different CRMs that might be good for one business and not so good for another business. So, um, yeah, I think that, you know, in the future, tech players will stick to their jam and, and do what they do well and then just connect with everything else. And I think that the, the advisors that can build out their process and leverage all of those those tech points mm. uh, are the ones that will will do better. I just want to add a bit more around that data piece uh, and that it's specifically the value that's going to be delivered. The advice business model is an ongoing advice business model. So the more people you can charge money to on an ongoing basis and service and give value to efficiently, the better your business model is because it's so costly. Patty. And effectively. And effectively, yeah. Well, that's what we're talking so about. So what you're saying is... Serve more people and make more money. Is that what you're saying? The point you the should point, become an advice. The, coach. Point, oh, the point I'm going to make like your business is so successful. Is that the data? The data pickup is it? <laughs> so wait. you saying clients go up, income goes up? Hey, hey, hey! hey. Whoa, give, give me a sec. Baddie, stop it. What I'm saying is that the uptick isn't actually around getting onboarding people. It's not about delivering that initial advice. That that's great. That's the short term outcomes. But the what the big game here is actually how do you make clients as sticky and deliver as much value as possible? And so how, for, how, how, how? I don't know the answers yet. Using uh, technology, I think you're saying. Well, it's if just I the data just points. Yeah. So you're, yeah. saying, you're saying big data, you're going to be able to tell if a client wants an SOA or a video or a PowerPoint. Yeah, something like that. That, that. That's a good example of what things you're going to be able to do. And it's about adapting and delivering and satisfying clients on an ongoing basis because that's the business model. Mm. So. And on that eloquent note, <laughs> <laughs> make more money, get more clients, make more money. <laughs> Thanks. Spe Andrew. Speaking of advice, um, <laughs> I, we haven't sworn I, enough yet. I'm about to. <laughs> what, what? I think let's have a chat about what we think advice is. So, uh, so this values based, goals based, fin life, fundraiser yeah. ideal lifestyle, sprout. No, all that, oh. like all this sort of, um, you know, Bitcoin, what kind of Bitcoin, what, <laughs> what kind of advice are you guys delivering, right? That is different from the traditional advice model. And uh, let, let's dive into that a little bit more. Um, Ben. Well, I think it has to be behavior focused and accountability and action driven, like that coaching style, pushing them to do what they need to do when they need to do it and then um yeah keeping them accountable because you know with that we're talking about the rise of technology but it's coming like watson's coming um robo advice is coming all those things and we'd be you know i think we, we would have been saying the same thing uh 12 months ago but more and more the the um the technical part of advice will be automated so that if you want to mm. be giving value it has to be outside of the what do you need the education for then well, well, that's why I said I'm educating myself about my business instead of the technical stuff. So, so let let's go through that just a bit. How, so, the client comes in, uh, they become a client. Um, what's your roadmap look like? So, what 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 are your deliverables? Well, we help people set up a you know a short term plan and then show them the long term outcomes that they're they're heading towards. So, we go through a you know an onboarding process, collecting information a full education and strategy session and the idea is to is to to push them to take action i think that's one of the big benefits of you know you engage with an advisor i make sure you get the plan set up mm. and then the ongoing piece obviously making sure you get the the results in the plan but mm -hmm. then we do the education piece which is not only about i don't want you to just set up a plan i want you to set up a plan and have confidence in your plan mm. so then i give you targeted education which yeah you could get it all online but i'm telling you the things that you actually need to know. Mm. So like, you know, the the it's not just saying learn all this stuff about money. It's saying these are the things that are relevant to you at this point and you should understand them so that once we get this plan set up, you're going to have confidence in are you the plan. Disseminating the information then. <laughs> you could say that if you wanted to be weird. <laughs> Good approach, Benny. Okay, I don't okay. Mind so it. so twelve. What does a client 
they walk in the 12 months later um what what have they achieved so we uh so we do a monthly check-in with all of our clients a monthly phone call and it's like an accountability call so it makes sure that they've done the things that they said they were going to do which most of the time they have a lot of times they haven't as well but it's just about you know changing that behavior especially over the first 12 months answering any questions and then pushing them forward with things outside of it you know we might help them set up a will like connect with a lawyer to set up their will during that time or things with their tax or you know um, other investments and those sorts of things um, and then yeah in the when we get to the 12 month mark we just refresh the plan and update it for the next for the next 12 months but I was actually um, looking into this the uh, just on just on the weekend we're, we're sort of tracking our the savings rates of our clients versus what they were before, what they were after. Um, and it's typically, we're at like 450% of the national average. Um, and the clients generally end up saving double, you know, within about 12 months. So, awesome. Wow. So, yeah. So, I think it's that, uh, that really the reason for that is because if they're engaged in their plan, they're confident in what they're doing, they've got peace of mind. Accountability. Um, and they're taking action. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're taking action and, and being accountable. So, it's almost like they're going from being stuck to being unstuck almost like that <laughs> when, when does your when does your book come out man when does it come out book's coming out first half of next year oh yeah book still doing very it very good very good nice yeah mate. yeah, yeah. Cool. So, uh, cool. it's been a beast I'm up to like a hundred thousand words at the moment so I'm sure I'm sure my editor will brutalise it and uh, and cut that down a fair bit but you got an editor I got your editor yeah oh cool. you're gonna she's be in tears great. I remember Clay's first cut he's like they took heaps of it out. <laughs> yeah. But I did totally have a chapter. That. Literally, I got about, cut. I was actually upset. Yeah, you, you were. Your story was in the book. <laughs> you got cut. But the, the, I was mostly devastated about. I think it was chapter five. The robot. And and it was how we were all going to just become robots. <laughs> oh, the nanobots. Yeah, it was just like you know because I was talking about the future. And then I was sort of reading these couple of books at the time. Um, Singularity is near. Terminator Two. <laughs> yeah, that's my favourite movie. Uh, so we got we got uh, Rise of Rise of the Robots and copious amounts of Reddit. Oh yeah, there's a fair bit of Reddit in there. And and so basically, you know, they're, they're, it's all sort of headed in this one direction about nanobots and things like that. And so I kind of just went off on this mad tangent, <laughs> talking about retirement 30 years from now. I'm like. And then we'll end up in robot bodies. And <laughs> I remember you telling me about Matrix that, and I'm like, Clayton the Futurist, I'm pretty sure that shouldn't be in your book, given that you're a financial advisor. <laughs> and then the editor comes back and she goes, she's like, uh, look, uh, people aren't picking up a book called Fund Your Ideal Lifestyle to learn how we're all going to become robots. <laughs> Fair enough. Good point. That'll be the second book. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> No, fair enough. All right. Well, we got. I think we got another five or ten minutes. Uh, Ray J, how, what what are you sort of supplying? Uh, so we we certainly would challenge the benefits of of goals based advice in terms of creating long term behavior change in clients. So we 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 look at values based advice and have developed a process with a, a doctor of psychology who's quite close to the X Y community, uh, mm. Helen Parker. And what she's helped us do is take clients through a process of understanding at a, at a core fundamental level what's important to them and what drives them uh, in, internally. And, and we do that before we go into a financial plan uh, for the clients that it's obviously appropriate for. Uh, that's and the that, onboarding. That's the onboarding process. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. How, do you how does that up? work? So, so it's, it's, a, it's a gamified process. It's in, it's in beta, but we're, we're hoping to uh-huh. roll it out and... Uh, it, it may even be a tool that we can we can open up further in the future, but at this stage it's beta, and you know we've got iPads in the office that people go through, and you know it's remarkable. I was I was a, a skeptic before I saw it work. So we've got a corporate lawyer, our corporate lawyer, who's a, a client. He came in to see us. Um, uh, we did a financial plan, beautifully set him up with an investment portfolio, super fund, making sure tax and all that. Happy days. Twelve months later, we said, "Hey, mate, we're building this thing. Can you help us with the IP on it?" And actually, do you want to? Have a go, <laughs> uh, and he he went through it with his wife. They're both in their respective second marriages, uh, mid forties, earning earning fantastic money. Um, you know, eastern suburbs lifestyle, private school, the whole thing. Very uh, very financially driven driven people, and he he was working so hard and and doing 12, 13 hour days because he wanted to create so much financial security. Is that hard work? Twelve or thirteen? 
<laughs> Mate, when you got a young family. Oh, but... you're, you're an employee, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> he was doing 12, 12 13 hour days every day. Um, in, in... That's odd. <laughs> Oh, you got a lot to learn. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Please continue. Uh, um, Sorry. And and you know uh, he was he was he was focusing on on the the commercial side of the business so that he could continue to create this lifestyle for their family. She was actually getting like she 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 felt financially secure and in fact their financial plan that that if if they even dropped from the status quo a little bit that they were well and truly secure for the rest of their days and, and they would tick all the boxes for the kids and those sorts of things as well. So uh, one, one of the things that, that we, we came out that came out of that was she was actually really upset and disappointed that dad is missing up on the kids growing up. Mm. So through through a process, we then go through a financial plan and say, okay, well, if, you're, if you maintain the status quo, this is what life looks like. We drop things down to 70, 75% of your current earning capacity. And in fact, you don't need that bonus this year. Uh, because of you know you you're starting to divert your attention towards your family for a period of time. What does that do for the the financial position of the family? And we show them two different scenarios. And which one are you most comfortable with, uh, client? And the where where we landed. It sounds silly, uh, but where it landed on uh, Thursdays, I think it is. He'll leave work at three o'clock in the afternoon, pick the kids up from school, take them out for pizza. How good's that? Sounds silly, right? It's it, it's but. She, she said that would be a really wonderful thing for the family to start to see so that he could start you know, improving the relationship That's with awesome. the kids. And mm. that, would, that would engender real, real good in their lives. And our role there was to firstly facilitate what was important to them, but then secondly articulate or help them articulate the financial impact of the decisions that they made. Mm. And I just wonder, you know, when, when, you, when you use that as a, as a case study of, of values-based advice, what that looks like compared with a goals-based approach, and I, mm. I, you know, I think the goals-based sort of takes the order at the the top, but mm. it's a, you know it's what we did when he first came in. We we tidied up his his tax position, and you know he 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 to some extent didn't quite know what to ask for, mm. uh, because people are coming in for financial advice. Well, not, it's often the often the yeah. case. Yeah, so it's actually developed an opportunity where I'll be spending time next year with Sydney University, and we're going to be writing a white paper, articulating. Uh, at, a, at a quantitative level, the benefits of values-based advice versus traditional financial advice, and actually helping, helping create some numbers around this stuff to 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 show people how this how this changes people's mm-hmm. lives. Uh, so hopefully this time next year we'll have some some wonderful data, <laughs> uh, which which will uh, which which we can put in in. Um, then I'll have all these data fields set up by then. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. In a in a white paper, which I'd I'd be delighted to to share with it. Ben's gonna go down to the detail. It says, "Do they want afternoon Thursday pizza? <laughs> <laughs> yes or no?" Well, we to be fair, we do. We obviously don't. Um, yeah, we don't have a gamified thing, but. Um, but a lot of what we do goes sort of into the values in a in a certain way. Like a, with a lot of the people we work with, we do scenario modeling as well. I don't say that this is based on your values, but it's mm. like, you know, clients with having kids and do you take, do you go back to work three or four days a week instead of, um, instead of full time or, you know, helping clients at the moment that they want to move, move down to the Yarra Valley and, and, and buy a place and, that sort of stuff and it's like it, it ties in with the value so i think that is is yeah. really important yeah yeah absolutely absolutely keen to see keen to see the uh white labeled version of that and patty yeah. do you want to do you want to wrap it up for us uh, let us know and then uh we'll we'll, we'll call it i'll be brief <laughs> maybe <laughs> you, you just sign them up to zapier right yeah, yeah and zapier just does everything for me <laughs> i actually don't actually have to deliver any advice now i've automated advice <laughs> <laughs> They don't even talk to me. You stand t- there waving. I've got an I've got a bot that they actually talk to. <laughs> right. Hello, welcome to AP Financial Solutions. Does a better job than me. <laughs> um, one key thing that I'm working on is how to like you mentioned it before around the the wills and like the estate planning and often the challenges for clients is like when you look at the whole financial spectrum, there's a whole lot of stuff that comes into play, whether it's in in professional services, you might say, and I think. I just see our the way the relations that we form with clients is a lot deeper than a lot of other services. Um, a lot of other services are quite transactional, and clients spend a lot of time um, trying to choose what the best other service is. And it, like, depending on the client, it can be quite 
like if they're more analytical they'll spend heaps of time on it if they're um if they're not as like analytical, clay if they're like clay they might um they'll probably just yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Perfect um, juxtaposition there. <laughs> and might just go for a really expensive one unnecessarily. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. I can see our role. Um, I'm working on how to actually standardize that so clients can actually, instead of not having it necessarily an answer directly for all these other options, whether it's um, asset finance, whether it's um, general insurance, is to have that in place, whether it's the accounting, the estate planning, have it really tight and packaged and deliver all this frictionless uh, philosophy that I'm applying to the advice process to that experience as well. So, and and still letting clients, so instead of just someone going directly to a product provider, it's actually they're getting an intermediary still at the same time. So mm. when, you've, when you've made your advice process fully digital and then created the most detailed fact find to help people choose other service professionals, what sort of ultra detailed activity do you think that you'll find to spend your time on? Can I just ask? <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. I was thinking yeah. not only do you already want... got the most epic insurance needs analysis in the financial planning industry yeah. and has automated his <laughs> advice business almost. Now he's got to Moving got to create every it. other profession as well. I, I I could just literally imagine, you know, you're gonna ask people, do you want a burger to arrive at your work at twelve thirty five every day? You know, and do you want tomato and pickles? I'm if they value burgers, it's <laughs> and how toasted do you like your bun? Yeah, Light, exactly. Medium, dark. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, 2017 XY Advisor uh, wrapping up for the year. Let's see what next year holds. Yep. See Happy you all days. on Friday, Sydney peeps, at the Christmas party. Yep. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. Cool. All good, good things. Thanks, guys. All right. Cheers. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs>